Thank you, Sister Roswell. Thank you so much. If I have a favorite singer, you will certainly be among my top five. I'm always blessed to hear you sing. God be praised. And may God continue to bless you and your family. Family of God, let us be thankful to God for taking us through this week and on to another blessed Sabbath day. I'd like to say good morning or good evening or good night, depending on where you are in the world. In spite of all that is going on, God continues to bless us as he guides us towards his promise of life. <clears throat> God is truly good and there are no other God but God. He is God, the God of creation who loves us unconditionally in spite of our disobedience. And by faith, we know that our God will never leave us or forsake us. Beloved, this morning I want to talk to you about the issue of faith and the importance of holding on to our faith as we maneuver our way through and out of this deadly pandemic. The whole world is in pain as we continue to watch helplessly while the pandemic continues to reap havoc to every community in every corner of the globe. And as yet, no one, not no one, seems to know the end of it. We, we can all agree that no matter where we are in the world, no matter what religion, race, or ethnicity, whether we are rich or poor, we all have been affected. Many of us have had to witness loved ones and friends suffering, fighting for bread, struggling to hold on to life. Many have lost loved ones, friends, and colleagues without being able to give our usual support to them. We have been going through long periods of lockdown, affecting many us in many different ways. Many have lost their jobs and others are unsure if they have a job to return to. Our children education has been affected. Our families have been able, have not been able to cultivate close family ties as they should do because of social distancing. What a year, a year like never before seen in our lifetime. And if we do not remain strong and faithful to God, some may, even some may even be tempted to blame God for what is happening. If not for our faith in which we know and believe that we serve a loving and caring God who would never walk away from us and who will never cause us harm. Many could quite easily be influenced by those who do not believe. For it is written that in the last days, many false prophets will come saying this and saying that. But let us be mindful and always be reminded that the Bible is our guide. Let us cling to the words of God as written in scriptures and pay little attention to the rumors, the many rumors that we hear day in and day out. Let us pray. Father God, creator of heaven and earth, I come before you this morning, O oh God, as your humble servant. Please be with me as I speak your word. Empower me with the guidance of the Holy Spirit so that my word will be that which you would have me speak, O oh God. Bless all those who is on the line with us, those who are at home, and those are watching from far off. Take full control now and bless me, dear Father, as I surrender myself into your hands. Father God, may the Holy Spirit guide us all. In Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. Family, it is written that faith is a substance of things not seen. 
But what does that mean? Well, Hebrews 11, written from verse one tells us, now faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtain a good testimony. By faith, we understand that the world were, were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are feasible. By faith, Abel offered a good and more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testified by his gift, and through it, he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not, and was not found because God has taken him from before he was taken. He has the testimony that he pleased God. There is nothing greater in this world, my beloved, than to have faith and to believe in the word of God. And as an example to all men, Job stood as a pinnacle of faith. For God said of Job, there is none like him. Beloved, we are faced with still more troubled days ahead. Let us continue to have faith, the faith of Job. And God will surely see us through this pandemic and take us safely onto the other side. And if by the will of God, some may yet sleep, then let us pray that, we, that all who sleep in the Lord, having faith that those who sleep in the Lord shall surely be awakened to the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. As he come bursting through the sky, where we shall all meet him in the clouds. For we have a promise in Christ Jesus that he has gone to prepare a place for us. And if he has gone to prepare a place for us, he will return to take us unto himself so that where he is, there we shall be also. What a glorious promise. And as people of faith, we have no doubt that one great day we shall see our Lord coming through the cloud and that all who sleep the dead in Christ shall inherit that glorious promise of life everlasting. We have no doubt. For God never lies. No more sorrow, no more pain, no more sickness, and no more death. Such is the promise of a loving God. For God promises never fail. Neither do our prayer go unanswered. Even though we sometimes never acknowledge when our prayers are answered. Why? Because the answer which we're looking for may not be the answer which we receive because God knows all our needs. I turn to the book of Job. The book of Job reading from chapter one tells us that there was a man in the land of earth whose name was Job. And that man was blameless and upright and one who feared God and shunned evil and seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also he possessed his possession was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 sand camels, 500 yoke of oxes, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household. So this man was the greatest of all people in the East. God had richly blessed you. He wanted for nothing. He possessed more than any man require, and even more than all his possession, he was faithful to God, and he would remain faithful to God. The wicked one, however, Lucifer, Satan, or the devil, by whatever name he is called, will miscalculate by thinking that Job's faith was dependent upon his possession 
upon the things which God had blessed him with. For he could, for he could deceive Eve, who in turn will cause Adam to walk away from life, choosing death instead. Then surely Job would be no different in his mind. As we continue, we read, now there was a day when the Son of God, when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, from where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord saying, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Family, this is the way the evil one, the evil one works, going to and fro on the earth, looking and seeking out anyone that he could devour for his sole purpose is to draw, draw men away from God, doing his best to defile God's promise. But I want you to know this morning that all we have to do is stand strong in faith, hold on to Jesus, call upon the Holy Spirit and be guided towards Jesus, our Lord. Being confident in the fact that God shall never willingly surrender us onto the hands of the evil one. Men may walk away from God, but God shall never walk away from man. As the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. Beloved, Father knows everything about us. He knows our strength and he knows our weaknesses. He will never give us more than we can bear. And so Satan set out to do his worst, answering God saying, does Job fear you for nothing? Oh, the disrespect. As he, as he dares to challenge God yet again, confident that Job would surely curse God if he lost all his property and the life of those who he loved most dearly. He would say to God, have you not made a hedge around him, around this household and around all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands and his possession have increased in the land. But now stretch your hand and touch all that he has and he will surely curse it to your face. Satan would greatly miscalculate. Beloved, when we have faith, just a little faith, God will multiply our faith. How many of us have had to know someone, one of our family members, a church member, a colleague, a son, a brother, a sister, who have been struck down by this pandemic, whilst whilst remaining helpless to assist. Do we then turn around and blame God for our misfortune? Do we curse God? Certainly not, for a strength cometh from the Lord. And when men will fail us, God will always stand with us. Job would now pass through a series of tribulation at the hands of the evil one that will surely destroy many mighty men of faith. And the Lord will say to Satan, behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. But in spite of all that he, Job, passed through, Job will not yield nor lose faith, for God will continue to be his rock. As the wicked one continued to do his worst, not thinking that the strength of Job was not for himself, was not for himself, but that his faith in the living God would keep him and sustain him. Everything which Job possessed would be taken away from him. His ox, his donkeys, his sheep, his camels, and even his beloved children. Yet he would not be broken. 
family job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head, and fell on the ground to worship God, saying, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job knew that to curse God would lead to death. He acknowledged that life on earth was just for a time and that one day we would all sleep. But because of his faith, he believed in the promise that those who serve the Lord, keeping his covenant, though they will sleep for a time, one great day all shall arise to inhabit, to inherit the glorious promise of life everlasting. Brethren, as we look upon the times in which we are now passing through, as we continue to the pains of suffering brought about by this dreadful virus, as we witness so much of our loved ones, mothers, fathers, brothers, family members, sisters, church brethren, all fallen victim to this virus, looking down for several months, many facing evacuation, not knowing if they have a job to return to. Some being thrown out of their homes because they can no longer afford the rent or the mortgage. Our children education affected as some have not even got the equipment to adequately study at home. Not being able to attend church or have the support of family and friends. As we, lay, as we lay our loved ones to rest. Throughout all this, our faith may truly be tested, but can we, like Job, hold firm? Can we submit to the will of God, believing, like Job, that we shall one day inherit a better life? Where there will be no more sickness, no more pain, and no more death. Beloved, let us hold on to that promise. I want to say to you today that God never lies and the search his promises will surely come to pass. Better days lies ahead, just as there will be much worse days to come for the wicked will one, the wicked one day know that his time is short and he will do everything within his power to bring us to destruction. Hold on to faith. Hold on to faith, my brothers and my sisters. Be sure that we have a friend in God. We have a mighty savior in Jesus and we have a comforter in the Holy Spirit. So let us never forsake God. Let us hold on to the promise that though we shall sleep, we shall also live. Those who sleep in Christ, Jesus, one day will surely rise to the glory of his coming as he bursts through the cloud where we shall meet him in the clouds. Let us be faithful and true to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ who left us with a promise, a promise oh so profound that in his father's kingdom, there are many mansions. So he's going to prepare a place for us. And if he is gone to prepare a place for us, he will return to take us unto himself so that where he is, there we shall be also. God be praised, brethren. We serve a mighty God, a God who created heaven and earth, the stars, the moon, he gave us life after shaping us from the dirt of the ground by breathing his precious breath of life within our nostrils. He created us in his own image that we should not die, but we shall live forever. And though men will walk away from God, as I said before, God will never, never walk away from us. So hold on my brothers, hold on my sisters, hold on. Let us choose life above death, for as it is written, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. 
and all those found written in the book of life shall inherit the precious promise of life everlasting. For it is by grace we are saved through faith and not of ourselves. Life remains a precious gift of those most high, of the most high God to who to reach we must all work to attain. Family, there is no other God but God. We're passing through hard times. We're passing through difficult times. But our Lord had told us that in the last days, those things will come. Remember, we have been told that we should look for the signs. As autumn turned to winter and as spring turned to summer, surely those things will come to pass and there are much worse to come. But fortunate we are, my brothers and my sisters, that we can be aware of the signs and the times in which we are living. For God has given us a time, a time to prepare, a time to make ourselves ready, a time that we should know that he is, that he is soon to come. So let us not waste time. For foolish is a man who say in his heart that this life is mine and I shall live it as I please. Life is promised unto no man. We can be here today and we could be gone tomorrow. So let us make the best of the time that we have. Not that we should drink and be merry like in the time of Noah. Not that we should party and forsake God, but that we should call upon God. We should submit ourselves to him. We shall do all that he asks of us so that when our Lord comes bursting through the cloud, we shall be ready to hear his voice saying, welcome. Because beloved, time is short. We do not know when our Lord shall come, nor when he shall appear. But what we do know is that every day we live is one day shorter before we sleep. Some might sleep young, some might sleep at middle age, some might live to a grand old age, but none of us know what tomorrow will bring. So let us treat every day as if it is our last day. Let us prepare ourselves and be ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because we don't want to be found wanting. We don't want our Lord to appear and we are still searching for him. We want to know that we have found him and we are clinging to him. We want to know that we're worthy to enter that new kingdom with him. The love. God is a loving God. His promises are true. Let us hold firm to his promises. Let us never forsake his words. Let us continually serve him and do what is required of us. For God is a loving God. He is a forgiving God. If we would only surrender unto his will, repent and call upon his name, he'll be quick to hear us. So let us be confident that our God will never forsake us. Let us walk with our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us be guided by the Holy Spirit because God is God and he is our creator who created us, not that we should die, but that we should live. And even when men fail him, even when we sin, he continued to hold out a hand to us, calling us back home because he don't want any one of us to be lost. No, our God don't want anyone to be found wanting. So let us be confident in his love. Let us love our fellow men. Let us love one another and let us do what is right. Father God, as I pray this morning, oh God, I ask that you help our faithfulness. You will help us to be faithful to you. You will strengthen us in faith, oh God. You'll help us to know that you are God and there's no other God but you. Father, be with us, lead us, and take us in the way that you want us to go, O God. May the Holy Spirit strengthen us, O God, in faith. Teach us to pray. Teach us to have confidence in you. Teach us to be on our knees day by day, calling upon you and asking your forgiveness, O God, 
for we are all born sinners, O oh God. And even though we strive to please you, there are times when we may fall, O oh God. But if we should fall, do not leave us on the ground, dear Father. Lift us up, uphold us. Father, bring us back to you. Because, Father, there is none but you. And we praise your name. We honor your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.